Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about the pathogenesis. So this is a new topic. In the previous videos, we have discussed um, the onset, the concept of the onset of disease. So from here, we're going to talk the second part, the pathogenesis. The pathogenesis. We have actually introduced the definition refers to the concept that explains the principle of the onset and development of disease. So from the onset, it actually describes why we have the disease. From the pathogenesis, we try to explain how we have the disease or how the pathogen going to affect us. We need to understand the process in how the how the pathogens, the pathogens in the etiologies, how the pathogens can affect us. That's the the content in pathogenesis. In the pathogenesis, the theories is also from Huang Di Neijing, and in the Huang Di Neijing. It described that the pathogenesis is one of the most important aspects that we're going to focus on because during, during our treatment, we mostly or most of the time that we focus on the treatment towards the pathogenesis directly instead of the symptoms. Although the differentiation, sometimes we People will mis misunderstand that we treat the symptoms only, but not really. Although we focus on the symptoms, but the treatment towards the symptoms is actually towards the pathogenesis directly behind the symptoms. That's why in our treatments, in our pra daily practice, in our clinical practice, we will gather all different symptoms from a patient. That's why for a patient come with, for instance, they come with a shoulder pain, we might ask about their diet, we might ask about their sleeping, all their activities, all those looks, all those information looks like unrelated why we need to gather these kinds of information. That's because we want to gather all information as much as we can. And from these symptoms, from this information, we can try to conclude to a pathogenesis, to conclude to a symptom or to a pattern. Then we will, the treatment will treat the pattern or the syndrome directly. That's uh, how to heal the disease instead of, instead of controlling the symptoms only. So pathogenesis, sometimes they also use the word mechanism. So it's, it's just to explain why, how the pathogen can affect us. The pathogenesis mainly focus on the imbalance of yin and yang. Disorder of essence, qi and blood, abnormal fluids, metabolism, and five internal evils. The five internal evils actually refers to the emotions. So the first, the Pathogenesis, we can separate them into different patterns. These patterns are actually the elements that's from our syndrome differentiation. So for, for example, as previously in the videos, that we sometimes use, use some clinic information, use some examples from clinic. So we will give you some Terms such as heart deficiency 
or spleen deficiency, or heart fire, liver fire. What does this term in terms of such as deficiency or excess refers to? What's a heart deficiency or the excess coldness or excess wind, excess dampness? What does it mean for this excess and deficiency? These, these terms are very important because from here, these are few videos is actually the bridge from the theory to the clinic to the, the to the symptoms from the patient. So these are the fundamental elements yes, for the syndrome differentiation, which we are going to study in the diagnostics in the next few weeks. So firstly, we're going to introduce what's excess. Excess refers to excess pathogenic qi. And deficiency refers to the deficiency of antipathogenic qi. So as you can see here, when we start from the top, we, when we start the topic, we start with deficiency and excess pattern. So the pathogenesis, when we study, we always study these in pairs. Because these, it's easy to understand in pairs. There's also the pairs of yin and yang. And then in future, when we study the eight principal patterns, we also use these different patterns to understand different clinical situations. So the SS refers to the SS pathogenic qi. From the definition you will see, wherever we talk about excess, wherever you see the words excess, it refers to pathogenic qi or the pathogens. Okay, so when you see the excess, it means the pathogens. The excess is something extra, very strong, but the, the objects of this What's very strong is pathogenic qi. Deficiency. Deficiency refers to anti-pathogenic qi or the healthy qi. So when we talk about the deficiency, it's the anti-pathogenic qi, such as a heart deficiency. The heart deficiency, what's deficiency here? The heart anti-pathogenic qi deficiency. So this kind of qi is the fundamental qi of the heart. Excess is the excess of the pathogens. That's something we don't need. So that's the difference between these two terms. The excess, if a patient, if, if a person is sick, is weak, such as when we talk about the antipathogenic qi, when we talk about the body constitu constitution. So if a very strong body constitution, or in a simple words, that's if we use as an example, although it's not accurate, very strong immune system, will be called excess body constitution, or excess qi. No, we will never, the answer is no, we will never say excess qi. It refers to the antipathogenic qi. So the very strong body constitution, very good immune system is no excess. Same as the, the deficiency. When we talk about a deficiency, we always refer to antipathogenic qi. We will never say that the deficiency coldness, especially from the, we will say the deficiency coldness, but for inter internal, but the coldness also due to the deficiency, the weakness of the antipathogenic qi from some organs. 
So as you can see from here, no matter what kinds of objects we're going to describe from deficiency, it always refers to the healthy qi. The healthy qi can be in different organs, but it must be the healthy qi. The excess must be the pathogens. And then the excess can also can be the excess pattern. So this, these are two different terms, excess and excess pattern. Access refers to the access or the strong pathogenic qi. It is refers to the conflict between the pathogenic qi, the struggle between the antipathogenic qi and pathogenic qi is more focused on the pathogenic qi. And in this in this situation, the pathogen is very violent. And in the meantime, the antipathogenic qi or the healthy qi is also still strong. So the struggle between these two different qi is very violent. That's why from our clinical practice, we can see the symptoms such as high fever or the patient become irritated. So these are the excess pattern. The excess pattern normally happens in the in the symptoms that should be caused by the six exogenous pathogens or the pestilence. As you can see, we, we use the COVID-19 for quite few quite a few times. And this because this is something close to us and very good example. As you can see, the symptoms of COVID-19, some of the patients can develop into severe condition. That's why they need a ventilator. So the excess pattern always happens at the beginning of the disease. Also, you can it can be the pathogen from the dampness, phlegm, or the stagnation, the food stagnation due to the improper diet or qi stagnation or static blood. These pathogens can cause the excess pattern. The excess pattern can be the symptoms of the excess pattern can be high fever. All the voice is very high, so they speak in very loud voice. Such if the pain, if the patient suffers from any kind of pain, they don't like others to touch. So during our physical examination, whenever you touch, such as if the patient has abdominal pain, if you touch the the stomach or the abdominal area, the patient will feel discomfort or the touching, the pressing from your fingers will aggravate their pain in the abdomen. So that's the excess pattern. Also, the excess pattern can the patient may have constipation or the difficult urination. The pulse is very strong and powerful. The coating of the tongue can be thick greasy coating. So these are due to the excess pathogen. These are the symptoms of the excess pattern. So when you see these kinds of symptoms, then you can think about these symptoms. This patient may suffer from excess pattern. And then what kinds of pattern, what kinds of the pathogen this is something we need to study in future in the diagnostics. So from here, we actually separate the symptoms into excess pattern and deficiency pattern. The deficiency refers to the anti deficiency of antipathogenic qi, or to use other words, a weakness of the antipathogenic qi. 
So in this situation, the healthy qi is weak. So the, the patient will, will show a lot of symptoms that's showing the weakness, such as fatigue or pale complex complexion or short breath. Short breath, spontaneous sweating or night sweats or the much feeding in the in both in both palms or under the soles. The patient also can feel the coldness in the fingers or the feet. The pulse can be weak and powerless. So these are the deficiency pattern. As you can see these patterns we didn't write on the slides. You need to refer to your textbook. You need to understand, you need to remember these patterns now in order to study the diagnostics. Because when we use study the diagnostics, we will use the Zhangfu organs. We will use the meridians to combine with these patterns. So the first thing we're going to start up different patterns such as deficiency and excess patterns. What do they mean? And then we will discuss further which organs deficiency, such as the heart deficiency, the spleen deficiency, the kidney deficiency. So when we talk about the def the heart deficiency or the spleen deficiency, you will understand that this is these patterns belong to the deficiency pattern. If they belong to the deficiency pattern, they will have the characteristics of deficiency. That's the symptoms we mentioned just now, the food such as fatigue or sh short breath, spontaneous sweating, or the night sweats. These symptoms are the characteristics of deficiency pattern. Then, if you add the organs, we will add organs to specific organ, and then you can add the symptoms from the organ, such as someone suffer from spleen deficiency. They have the weakness, the weak function of the spleen function, plus the deficiency pattern. That's how we use this some the pattern differentiation. So from here, so from the last parts of our theory. We need to understand what deficiency pattern and excess pattern. When we talk about the excess and deficiency patterns, it seems like that I focus on the, the weakness of the healthy qi or the violence of the pathogens. So it seems these two are opposites. So one is very strong, the pathogens are very strong. The, the organs, the, the qi of the organs, the antipathogenic qi is very weak. So these are the opposite sides. But can these two different patterns happen in one patient? That's the question. Can these two kinds of pattern, different patterns happen in, happen in one patient at the same time? Is it possible? The answer is yes. And actually from our clinics, most of the condition is the combination of these two patterns. So no, we can't say 100% there's no excess pattern only or deficiency patterns only. It also can be by most of the condition, it will be combination of these two patterns. That's because such as the violence, very violent pathogen, pathogens, they affect us. Or if someone, they, they have been sick for quite a long time, or for the, the wrong treatment due to the practitioner's fall, in this situation, the antipathogenic qi 
can be damaged, especially if after a long time, long, long time the sickness, the, the patient has been sick for quite a long time. This is also the situation we can see from our daily life. You see a patient is very active or energetic if they suffer from severe chronic diseases. Such as someone suffer from, for instance, from TB or from lung TB or TB in other area or suffer from HIV infections and then once they develop into AIDS. You see those patients are very energetic. The answer is no. That's because these kinds of situation, the deficiency patterns, or why it becomes deficiency pattern. That's because after a long-term disease, after a long-term HIV infection, and then eventually it develops into AIDS. And then this is after a long-term disease, it will de develop into deficiency pattern. But as you can see from this example, that's when it develop into AIDS or the TB have acute attack, the patients are weak, they can feel fatigue, but the pathogen, the TB virus, still so the, the TB is not virus, it's a kind of bacteria. The bacteria is still very strong. This is the excess pattern to be cause all these symptoms. In the meantime, the patient, the organs function is weak. That's why it says in this situation, the patient have an excess pattern and deficiency pattern at the same time. And these can also be the clinical symptoms from the 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 symptoms we can see from clinics, such as someone suffer from spleen deficiency and cause results in dampness. The dampness of the body is due to the spleen deficiency. That's because the spleen, once the spleen becomes deficiency, the spleen loses the function to regulate the water metabolism or the transportation and transformation of water. So you will cause the ex the excess dampness in the body. First, it's due to the spleen deficiency. So the weakness of the spleen, then you cause the excess dampness in the body. Have you realized that the term I use here? This is pattern is due to the spleen deficiency. So it's the weakness of the organ of the spleen. And then this weakness causes the dampness in the body. That's the, the product of pathogens. But this dampness, internal dampness, becomes excess, become to block in the middle jump to block in the meridians cause other symptoms. So in this situation, what we can see, why we use it, these terms, why we consider as the SS pattern and deficiency pattern, that's because from the symptoms, from the clinical symptoms, you can see the patient. Some symptoms from spleen deficiency, such as fatigue, Heaviness in the in extremities, poor appetite. In the meantime, the patient can have like distending feeling in the abdomen or loose stool. So these are the deficiency symptoms. But once the deficiency, the spleen deficiency causes dampness, the patient may suffer from this sticky mouth, so in the mouth they don't, they don't feel comfortable, they feel the saliva is, is quite sticky. And also, they can have abdominal pain, distending abdominal feeling or fullness 
in the abdomen. And also the patient may have thick, greasy coating on the tongue. So these are all the excess pattern due to the dampness. This is something hap happens in one patient. And from these different symptoms, you can see some symptoms belong to one disease, one pattern, and the other symptoms belong to the excess. So this, this is the example of the excess and deficiency. Patient also can develop from the excess to deficiency. That's from the so the first example we introduced, the patient developed from a deficiency to excess. The dampness in the body is due to a spleen deficiency. And then the next begin to introduce the other direction. The excess pattern developed into deficiency pattern. This refers to the excess pathogens such as especially for the superficial pattern, such as the flu, or due to the wind, or coldness, or heat, or fire. And then these kinds of excess pat patterns can cause indeficiency of certain organs, such as the fire, the fire has the, the characteristic of consuming body fluids. So if the patient has excess of fire in the body, it will cause the indeficiency in the, in the organs, such as if you have the heart indeficiency, the patient will may have fever, may have palpitation, may be red face or red eyes, they have a dark urine, urine, constipation, yellow coating on the tongue, or and uh, speedy pulse. So these are the excess pet symptoms. In the meantime, the patient may feel thirsty because of the heat, because of the fire. The patient also may have difficulty, uh, may have short short breathing red tongue with less saliva so these are the deficiency pattern the something not enough so these two different patterns can develop into each other It, this one aspect we need to be careful that is the, the true and false. The true access and the false access, or the true access with the false deficiencies. So the true and false of access and deficiency, it refers to the extreme, extremely excess or extreme deficiency situation can cause the false symptoms of the other side. So the first we're going to introduce is a, is a true deficiency. But from the manifestation, we can see false excess pattern. So what's the symptoms? Sometimes, sometimes it's quite difficult to understand here, the true and false. So the one we're going to introduce here is the true access manifestates with false deficiency. True access, the patient may have the excess symptoms such such as the constipation, fullness in the abdominal area, and this fullness 
or painful abdominal abdomen pain. This kind of pain, the patient doesn't like to be pressed or to be touched. Because once you press, it becomes worse. Patient may feel hot flashes and red tongue with yellow coating. But in the meantime, the patient may develop, especially the, the excess happens after a long time. The patient may feel fatigue. They feel tired, they don't want to speak. They feel the, the weakness in the extremities or lose stool. As you can see, these symptoms, when you compare the different symptoms, one is the excess pattern, but from the man manifestation. When this excess pattern develop for quite a long time, and then they consume the antipathogenic qi in the body, it causes all these deficiencies Patterns. So if for this situation, we need to di distinguish which one is true, which one is false. So in future, when we study the diagnostics, we will talk. We will talk th this in details because this is very important. If you don't know how to di distinguish the true and false. Of the excess and deficiency, you will treat to the wrong direction. You will treat totally wrong because if we, in the excess some excess pattern, but the manifestation is deficiency symptoms, and then in this situation, if you, if you think that the patient is in deficiency condition, so for deficiency we're going to tonify the the body you make the SS worse. Okay, yeah, that's the, the first true and false. The second, the true deficiency with the false SS. So in this situation, the patient is weak. The healthy qi is weak. So this, this patient needs to be treated by tonifying. But the manifestation of this patient can manifest the excess, excess symptoms. So we will use the similar examples. The patient suffer from spleen deficiency. So the patient will have poor appetite, fatigue, um, fat tongue, weak pulse. These are the deficiency pattern. Deficient symptoms, but the patient still can have abdominal fullness. So they still feel fullness in the abdomen area. They can feel this tending feeling in the abdomen. But when we compare with this, the fullness in the abdomen, this kind of in the deficiency pattern, the patient can have the fullness. In the excess pattern, the patient also can have the fullness of the abdomen. What's the difference between these two? It's from the deficiency pattern, the fullness of the abdomen area. If you press them, the patient may feel better. So they prefer pressing the excess pattern of the fullness. They dislike pressing. So that's the, the key symptoms to distinguish SS, the true SS or true deficiency. So if a, that's why physical, exam, physical ex, examination is a very important for our clinical practice. You can't diagnose from the symptoms only, such as the example we talk just now for the fullness of the abdomen area, the fullness, the distending feeling in the abdomen can happen in both deficiency and excess patterns.
you need to use your your physical exam examination techniques to distinguish it is true or false. So in the diagnostics, we're going to study how to distinguish this more in more in details. Spleen deficiency, internal dampness. This is the example we gave you. Fatigue, poor appetite, loose stool. These are the deficiency symptoms due to spleen deficiency. In the meantime, the patient may have fullness of the abdomen. This is excess symptoms due to the internal dampness. The dampness block the qi circulation in the body. So you cause dark nature. That's why they have fullness. So this is the deficiency and cause excess. Deficiency, excess. So these two happen together. Fever due to the excess heat. Excess heat. The patient may suffer from high fever, irritation, red face, eyes, and constipation. These are the symptoms due to the heat, due to the fire. The fire will consume the body fluids, which can cause indeficiency. Okay. So indeficiency, if you don't have enough body fluids in the body, you're going to feel thirsty. You can have shortness of breath. You can have palpitation, that's the heart indeficiency. Dry mouth is very similar to the thirsty, the thirst. So from here, that's the example to develop from the excess to deficiency. So these two, they can develop into each other. From deficiency to the excess, from the excess to deficiency. So this is some of the examples. These are the main manifestations of the these two patterns. And then we say for this pathogenesis, we need to understand their definition, their characteristics, and also we need to know the development of diseases. That's how we can predict or we can kind of forecast forecast or we want to know What's going on with the patient? Is is the patient safe or in dangerous situation? Is the the development of the disease every day or every, every few days we see the patient? Is it the disease develop into a good end or to to a bad prognosis? How do we know? That's from the balance of the antipathogenic qi. And the pathogenic qi. So if the antipathogenic qi prevails, when we talk in the the onset of disease, we talk about the the struggle between the antipathogenic qi and the pathogenic qi. So the struggle between these two, we say one is your one was your army, the other one was the the enemy. So the development of disease it actually depends on the these two force from your enemy, from the your army and the enemy, which one wins, which one prevails. So if the antipathogenic qi prevails, it indicates that the the body constitution, your your healthy qi is very strong to fight with the pathogen. And the pathogen is climbing, it's eliminating. It, it so in this situation, the disease is going to develop into a good result. That's from the, 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 from the clinic, we can see the patient is recovering. And sometimes in this situation, you can see after someone after flu, for instance, someone recover from flu, 
they may feel tired for a few days. Or if someone happens suffer from more severe con disease, disease, such as a heart attack or stroke, after they recover from stroke, once everything is stable, the patient may feel fatigue. That's because the antipathogenic qi, although your healthy qi wins the war, wins the struggle between the, the enemy, the pathogens, but in the meantime, your army also hurts a lot. So the weakness of your antipathogenic qi will manifest as the, the weakness of the, of the symptoms, such as the fatigue. Tiredness. These are the the reason from the struggle between these two. The second is the pathogenic qi prevails. This is this kind of disease will develop into a worse condition. That's because the pathogen wins. Your enemy wins your your army. So in this situation. From the clinical manifestations, you can see the symptoms become worse and worse. The patient, the patient may have fever. The fever is still in high levels, high grade, and also the patient may develop in, into coma. So all the symptoms become worse. Or if someone suffers from different kinds of pains in the joints, the pains become worse and worse. That's because the pathogenic qi prevails. And in the meantime, when we focus on one, the pathogenic qi prevails. When we say pathogenic qi prevails, we actually imply that the antipathogenic qi is weak. You've seen here, we always talk about yin and yang. Whenever we talk about yin, the yin is very strong, which means the yang is weak. If it says the yang is very strong, which means the yin is weak. Although we didn't say, although we didn't say so, we need to understand that the, the circle of yin and yang is the certain amount. If one part is more, the other part will be less. So that's the the theories, the philosophy for all these week, these months from the beginning of the year until now, all which all what we try to train the way of think of the thinking is this kind of thinking. When you see one, you will see the other parts. When you see the male students, you also see the female students. When we talk about Antipathogenic qi, you also think about the path pathogenic qi. Okay. The last development of disease can be the continuous fighting between the antipathogenic qi and pathogenic qi. So from the previous two, two situation, that means either your healthy qi wins or the pathogen wins. So why you recovered? One developed develop into a worse situation. For instance, someone got flu, and then when you went to the the doctor, the GP, they will send you back to home without any tablets, because they thought the flu can be recovered. Your antipathogenic qi can help you to recover from the flu, and this flu. So some people recover from the flu automatically so they didn't take any medicine they, but they can recover from there that's the antipathogenic qi prevails but in other very unlucky situation the disease the patient developed into pneumonia also from the flu develop into the pneumonia that's the situation of pathogenic qi prevails. So in this situation, in these examples, these two examples, you will understand what 
does it mean by anti? What's the manifestation, the clinical manifestation of anti-pathogenic qi and prevails, or the pathogenic qi prevails? So these two. When these two, if they the force of these two is similar, so they fight. Doesn't neither of them can win. So do you keep fighting in this situation? If you see a long process of the course, long course of the disease. So this is the the fighting between these two. That's why for some for instance, for some fever, some patients have fever for a few days. And this fever is not very high, but they still have fever such as 38 degree or 37.5 degree. And then the fever still there. The fever won't develop into 39, 40, but the fever also won't reduce below 70, 37. So that's the the situation continuous fighting between these two different qi. The fighting between these two different qi, qi why they can fight together for a long course. That actually in, indicates that the antipathogenic qi is strong, but in the meantime, the pathogenic qi also strong. At least these two are not weak. So they can that's why they can balance. They can't win each other, but they also won't they also don't fail fail from the the fight from the struggle. Okay, so that's the discussion in the SS and the deficiency pattern. So these patterns you need to I would suggest that you can go back to your textbooks and then read some examples or you can watch the video again to think about the examples that we gave you from the video. These will help you to train the ways of thinking. We need to train the reflection. Whenever you see the symptoms, you can reflect in your brain without a second. This symptom is excess or this symptom is deficiency. So that's the purpose of our training in the theories study. Okay, so we're going to stop here and in the next video we are going to talk about the yin yang pattern. Thank you guys.